Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, uh, Presiding Officer. And of course, I welcome the very positive contribution to the debate from members across the Chamber and the indication uh, that uh, this highly technical bill, uh, which has raised a, a, a significant number of issues, uh, will be supported, I think, unless people change their mind and we come to decision time. Um, let me just say a little bit about Common Good, and I've actually been passed the Act of 1491. It is a modest little act of two sentences uh, passed. We, we've been having a little debate. We believe it was James IV, but well, if somebody can enlighten us, we'll be certain. I'll just translate it from the Scots into the English. Uh, the act simply says, um, item, it is stated and ordained that the common good of all our sovereign lords, boroughs within the realm be observed and kept to the common good of the town and to be spent in common. And necessary things of the borough be the advice of the consul of the town for time and decades of crafts where they are. In other words, forever. Uh, and that is it. That is what this is founded on. And of course, um, such modest little pieces of legislation, although it was the 19th piece of legislation in 1491, um, do, when translated into the modern era, leave certain interesting and important questions unanswered or uncertain. So I think in talking about common good, uh, that, that is an issue that we have to recognize, and that is why I think uh, the consultation that is open, which includes questions on common good, is an opportunity to start to do two things, to understand the status quo, but also to work out what the new status of common good might be in future, because perhaps it's time to, to move away from the complexities of the past and state some simplicities that are fit for purpose uh, for the future. But that's for another day, and I suspect for another minister. Because, of course, this minister is taking this bill forward because very largely the, uh, the leases that are affected by this are, in fact, rural leases. But it is perfectly fair to say that a range of ministers could have been standing here uh, on this particular issue. Uh, Alec Ferguson uh, apologised for repetition. He's obviously forgotten one of the important rules of politics in this relation, that a debate is not over when everything's been said. It's only over when everybody said it. And, 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 and perhaps this debate illustrates uh, that point uh, quite, uh, quite clearly. Um, Annabel Ewing highlighted her experience as a conveyancing lawyer. I listen uh, very carefully uh, with what she has to say. Margaret McDougall, I'm grateful for the if transient uh, uh, promotion in the interstices of this particular debate and described effectively some of the difficulties that she's experienced in, in her experience in local government of finding out whether something is common good. The reality is, if there's a document in somebody's file somewhere, um, not necessarily, of course, now in the, the Council Concerns' own files uh, that says something's common good. It may be all but impossible to find unless you know it exists in the first place. So I think there are genuine uh, significant uh, concerns. Um, consensus, uh, Jim Hume, uh, in a sense, recognised uh, that consensus probably has been achieved. We've responded as a government to uh, the issues as they've arised, and I hope uh, that uh, in, in looking at Labour's uh, review of their position, uh, he perhaps remembers the, 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 the old uh, saying um, when this sort of thing happened, when uh, someone was asked and responded, when the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do? And I suppose uh, that's a question we might uh, 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 address to Mr. Hume. I think grown-up politics is recognising that there is a debate, the debate moves, and we take positions as the debate uh, moves on, as we in the government uh, have, have done. Now, it's uh, something where we'll continue to work uh, in relation to common good with local authorities. I think local authorities were open and honest with committees, gave it their best shot, showed depth and knowledge uh, and understanding, and that, 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 that was good. Um, the Justice Committee uh, Stage 1 report, uh, paragraph 55, said the bill is not about common good. It's about our prolonged leases. Uh, and the conclusion of paragraph 61 of that report, the desirability for certainty in this legislation 
and the provisions for compensation provided in the Bill uh, have led the Committee to conclude that it is not persuaded at this time there is a compelling case for exempting leases of common good property uh, from the Bill. And uh, the current Committee, uh, the, the Rural Affairs, Climate Change and Environment Committee, said at paragraph 127, the Committee is not persuaded by the arguments made thus far to exempt ultra-long leases from the common good. But it did also say neither is the case against this exemption being a clear and compelling one. There are a number of reasons against the exemption, as I said uh, earlier. Um, the, the, the bill, of course, is not taking account of who the landlord and tenant are. It's blind uh, to that. Uh, decisions uh, of development in particular should be matters for the planning system. Although Alec Ferguson referred to um, enlightened feudal landlords who have helped build uh, the, the attractive uh, facades we have in some of our cities. But, of course, not all feudal landlords were enlightened, I think it would be fair uh, to say, uh, and that is why uh, addressing the feudal system uh, has uh, taken place over the recent uh, decades. We do need to protect uh, common good land. We won't forget about this. And, indeed, our consultation document in the Community Empowerment and Renewable Bill, Renewal Bill um, has two specific questions, questions 25 and 26. I draw members' attention to the fact consultation does not close until the 29th of August. Uh, so if you are short of things to do over the summer recess, do read that consultation and do respond. Because I, I don't think anyone should stand before this chamber or, or any other forum and suggest they have all the answers in common good. That would be specious. It is a genuine question uh, that we should all turn our mind to. And those of us who have been involved in this debate are probably relatively well placed to understand some of the complexities and uncertainties and perhaps uh, make a, a contribution. I confirm again that uh, I will write to local authorities saying that any compensatory and additional payments should go to common uh, good fund if common good land is affected, while recognising the amounts uh, will uh, be very small. We have prepared the letter and assuming royal assent, uh, we, it will go out shortly thereafter. Um, land registration uh, has come up again in the, uh, uh, the, the, the debate that we've just had, and our commitment to land registration is shown by the Land Registration Scotland Bill, uh, which we've just put through Parliament. Again, a bill arising as a result of the Scottish Law Commission report, highlighting the value of having uh, some of the best of our legal brains out there engaged uh, in the issues of reforming uh, Scotland's law and identifying what needs to be done. And as Mr Ewing said at stage three on the 31st of May at column 9596, the Land Registration Bill provides the legal framework that will allow the land register uh, to be completed. And we will uh, ensure that officials continue to work with registers of Scotland. We need to ensure that information on the provision of the bill reaches landlords, tenants and their legal representatives. And as ultra-long leases are concentrated in particular areas of the country, uh, so we can target that information in a similar way. We'll make sure that we have articles in relevant publications and we'll provide information on the Scottish Government website and on Registers of Scotland's uh, website. Now, our intention is that the appointed day for the Bill will be in 2015, and that should give sufficient time uh, for parties to prepare. Uh, we will need uh, some secondary legislation, particularly in relation to forms, and we'll consult on these uh, in line with our uh, best practice. Um, in conclusion, I'm, I'm grateful to uh, colleagues across the Chamber. It's been a very technical bill, uh, but no one could accuse it of having been dull. Uh, and indeed, uh, there have been uh, sparks of humour from many of those who've contributed uh, to this debate. Uh, the bill team, uh, advising a minister who's working outside um, uh, the justice area, uh, have been superb in their support of the minister and ensuring that he uh, has got properly engaged and has a proper understanding of the complexities and legal aspects of this. And I've thoroughly enjoyed having uh, their support. It is a, an overdue uh, bit of uh, land reform. It, it will reduce uh, costs and complexities. Uh, it is something which we've had an excellent debate on. Uh, the common good debate that we've had will warm up uh, the debate that will follow the consultation that is currently on the table. 
I hope that uh, members who have just joined us uh, also consider uh, responding to the consultation on common good. But, uh, Presiding Officer, uh, let me close this debate by commending the Bill to the Chamber, urging members to support it at 5 o'clock and to make sure that their constituents, uh, where they meet them, are aware of the contents and opportunities uh, that come with this bill, because we can all play a part in finally, finally, ending uh, the feudal system in Scotland. Presiding officer.